Hi, this is Pastor Kevin with Journey of Faith Forest Christian Church. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for logging on today to watch our video podcast as we explore God's Word and apply it to our lives. You know, it's so important for our walks that we spend time each day in God's Word to get to know Him and get to grow in Him. With all of my teachings, I have a sermon handout that is used during the message. It contains scriptures and fill-in-the-blank sections for you to follow along with. You may obtain this handout by logging onto our website that is listed on the screen. Go to our resources section and choose study materials. I hope and pray that God's word will speak to you today and thank you for joining the journey. Please raise your hand and we will get you a Bible. And if you do not own a Bible, please accept it as a gift from us to you. Oh, but before, before we do that, um, I, I got, I'm just so excited you're back. Kevin. I just don't know what to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and receive offering right now. <laughs> I guess I'm taking this whole donate now button on the new website a little seriously. Huh? Well, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And we thank you for this chance for us to step out in faith, Lord. To show that we believe and trust in you. And not in this world, Heavenly Father. Use this money to continue to touch lives, not just in this community, but around the world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You know, I was talking back on the Bible. Was, I was talking with Roxy today. And we were saying, you know, it's kind, of a, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet thing when you have that Bible and it starts wearing out. And the pages start falling out. You know, on, on one hand, it, thank you, Jesus, that you're using it so much. On the other hand, like, you know, you kind of have this bond with this Bible. But, but, you know, I think, church, we should all kind of make sure we see a little bit of wear and tear on our Bibles. Amen with that? But more importantly, did you come expecting great things from a great God today? Yes. Did you come expecting great things from a great God today? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to learn today through this story that why we should expect great things from a great God, because our God truly does some amazing and great things with that. Amen? Well, if you have your Bibles, if you want to open up to Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to begin in verse 22. And if you don't have your handout, please raise your hand and we will get you a handout. As you know, this is what I go through. I, we have some fill in the blanks and we also have some scripture that I won't be going over uh, in the message. But it's scripture that God has put on my heart for this week. And as you get there, I want to just start off with, have you ever heard that phrase, you get out what you put in? Have you ever said that phrase? Have you ever really thought about what that phrase means? You only get out what you put in? Well, to kind of give you an example, working out at a gym for five minutes a week, for example, you won't receive the same type of health benefits that you would if you worked out at that same gym for two hours a day, five days a week. And as we talk about miracles, we've talked a lot about what we get out of our miracles. We've read and learned that we get hope, we get help, we get happiness, just to name a few. But have you ever thought about what do you put into your miracles? Now, I know for some of you, maybe that's kind of an odd question to ask. What do we put in? Do we put anything into our miracles? You mean I'm supposed to be a part of this? I kind of just thought God did all the work and I just kind of was, was the benefactor of, of that. But, but you mean to tell me that I'm responsible for our miracles? Well, think of it this way. What if tonight, while you were sleeping, the Lord were to come to you in a dream and tell you that the greatness or magnitude of your miracles that you received from this point forward was dependent upon what you put into them? Would it change how you think about your miracles? Would it change how you pray about your miracles? Well, I want to share with you this box of macaroni and cheese. See, the sound part, I thought this was going to be the big prop of the service. I had no idea all that other stuff was going to go on. But, you know, this box of macaroni and cheese in and of itself is kind of a miracle. I mean, how on earth can we take all the ingredients inside of this little box? It can sit in this box for a long time, probably longer than we want. Sit in trucks, sit in warehouses, sit in stores, sit in our cupboards. We can open it up. Put all these ingredients together and make something that tastes just amazing. 
Now I can tell you, for our young son Ryder, this is his favorite food in the whole, whole wide world. But to one degree, the fact that we can actually make this box of mac and cheese is a miracle. But have you ever thought about what would happen with this really good tasting food if we left one of the key ingredients out of it? For example, what would happen if we decided to get creative and we left the macaroni out one day? So instead of macaroni and cheese, we just had cheese. Or, or what happened if we just forgot to leave the cheese out and just kind of had the macaroni? Well, that, that might be okay. It's probably better than the, tea, the cheese part. But it wouldn't be the full benefit. It wouldn't be the complete thing that we wanted. Amen? Well, as we think about our miracles, we have to understand that our miracles are kind of the same way. Now, I mean, yes, and I don't want you to think, like, oh my gosh, am I, is that why I'm not receiving miracles because I'm not doing something? No, God still does miracles, and thank you, Jesus, for most of the part we don't have to get involved in. But what I'm challenging you is maybe, just maybe, our miracles could be more impactful, powerful, significant, miraculous, if we, too, brought something to the party. Today, we're going to talk about and we're going to learn that Jesus does expect us to bring something to our own miracles. And in fact, if we don't bring this to our miracles, I believe that our miracles won't be the same. So Lord, we thank you for today, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds to hear your word. And Lord, I pray that as, as we draw closer to you and we take our steps, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that we would humbly serve you, humbly follow you, humbly obey you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, beginning in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Now, real quick, to give you kind of a, a context of this, right before this passage, Jesus, I don't know, did this kind of thing. He fed a bunch of people with not a lot of food. And so right now, he's kind of sent the disciples off into a boat. He's like, hey, I have an idea. Why don't you guys get in this boat and just kind of sail for a while? I'm going to go pray, but you just kind of go off on your own into the ocean and just relax there, and I'll be back with you for a while. So, so the disciples are in this boat, and they're in the sea. And, and beginning in verse 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now picture this scene for a moment. Peter sees Jesus walking on the water. The sea that, that is not by no accounts a calm sea, but a, but a boy, it says the wind was boisterous. The sea was big, the water was choppy. He sees Jesus walking on this ocean and he decides and thinks that he can do the same thing. So he asks Jesus basically and says, will you allow me to walk on the sea with you? Now, what's interesting about Peter, you know, I know Peter gets a bad, bad rap a lot of stuff, but, but I know that Peter never thought that if he walked on the water, he would be doing it by his own power, but he would be doing it through Jesus, which is why he asked if he could do that. And so, G, or excuse me, so Peter, with his eagerness, says, Lord, basically, if it's your will, let me walk on the water. <clears throat> and in one simple word, and in one simple answer, Jesus says, come. 
And with that response, Peter, Peter took a step of faith and believed that he could walk on the water. And I have to tell you, as many times as I've read this story, I personally believe that that is the main point. That Peter believed that he could walk on water because Jesus told him to come. But Peter wasn't going to be walking on the water in his own strength. Because I don't know if you've ever tried, but it's impossible to walk on water. But for Peter to walk on water, he would be entirely dependent upon Jesus. And he would be entirely reliant upon his faith. We know that it didn't take much faith to do it. For Peter to take that first step. And church, we have to learn and understand what Peter knew. That if we want to experience miracles, we must have faith that a miracle can happen. We must have faith that a miracle can happen. You see, church, I believe in all of our miracles. That is the key ingredient that we bring to our miracles. Faith. It wasn't Peter's, if it wasn't for Peter's faith, he would have never stepped out of that boat in the first place. If it wasn't for Peter's faith, he would have never experienced as much of the miracle as he did. The Lord looks at each and every one of us and asks us to take our step of faith to experience the miracles that he has in store for us. And if you don't believe me, think of this. If Peter wouldn't have taken that step of faith, he would have never walked on water that night. And you might not realize this, but every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter where you are on your journey, are called to take a step of faith. In fact, today already in this service, some of you have already taken a step of faith. Maybe you're really struggling financially. Maybe you don't know how you're going to pay all your bills. Maybe your car needs gas, your kids need braces. Somehow you have to figure out how to pay your mortgage and pay your utilities before they cut them off. But then the offering plate came along. And maybe you thought, well, God, I want a tithe, but God, now is not a good time. But the Lord said, come. So on faith and only faith, you placed your offering into the basket. Or maybe your step of faith has to do with trust. Maybe there's someone in your life that has hurt you, bruised you, wounded you, shamed you. Maybe you swore that you would never talk to that person ever again in your life. But Jesus said, come. And you know now that you must work to restore that relationship. You must work to heal that relationship. And maybe it's not that, but maybe there's something in your life that you know would be impossible unless Jesus said come and encouraged you to take that step of faith. See, church, just like the disciples, there are going to be times in our life where we're going to be sent into some storm so that we can grow in our faith, so that we can take that next step of faith. See, Jesus knew what he was doing when he sent them into that boat that night. He knew the waters wouldn't be calm. He knew that the sea would be raging. But I believe that this was more of a test of faith for disciples than anything. For all of us, it's easy to say we have faith and believe when things are going well. But, but God, what do you mean when I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness? What do, you, what do you mean when my marriage has just been shattered? What do you mean when I've lost my job and I can't pay my bills? You still want me to have that same kind of faith? You know, it's interesting as, as we've been doing a, a, our football practices this week, people have been asking, we just started, how's the football team work? And I give them one simple answer. I'll tell you when we put the pads on, we start hitting. 
You see, it's easy to say we are good when we're not doing anything. It's harder to say it when the storms start raging. And I believe that probably in each and every one of our lives, we have already taken some amazing steps of faith and we have seen some amazing miracles because of those steps. But what happened with Peter? See, Peter, Peter took, I don't even know how many they were, but, but Peter did take a couple steps of faith and walked on water. But church, we can't rely on our past steps of faith to keep us walking on the water going forward. We can't say, well, I, I remember that time. You know, I remember, I did, I, I mean, that, that was amazing. We have to continue stepping and walking in faith on the water and through the storms that we go through. See, we need to keep taking our steps, just like Peter, to draw nearer and closer to God if we want to experience Him and see Him in new and miraculous ways. See, I think it would be really easy to criticize Peter and say, he's the one of little faith. But remember, he was the only disciple that night that had enough faith to step out of the boat to begin with. Remember last week I said that we have to pursue the promises or the miracles that God has in our lives. And we have to claim those promises or miracles in our lives. But see, church, I believe that in order to pursue and claim, we first must believe in his promises and miracles in our lives. We might be like Peter and take our steps of faith for a while. We might enjoy the miracles that the Lord has in store for us. But is there a point on our journey when we begin to doubt? Now, I realize for a lot of people, saying the D word in church can be pretty uncomfortable. And no, I'm not talking about the devil, but I'm talking about doubt. Doubt is one of the hidden secrets inside of the church, I personally believe. We don't talk about it, but we all do it from time to time. We might not admit it, but we will all face it. But see, church, I don't believe that doubt is sin or wrong if it allows us to get to a much stronger place, if it allows us to grow spiritually. In Matthew 14, 30, it says, But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Peter started his walk on water with great intentions and with great faith. But he began, he became distracted and began to sink. But why did Peter sink? Because he saw. No, not Jesus, but because he saw the wind. He took his eyes off Jesus. And when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to doubt Jesus. Church, don't ever doubt your miracle. Don't ever doubt your miracles. But we're human, so why do we doubt? Why would Peter, after taking a few steps of faith and walking on water, all of a sudden realize that he shouldn't be doing that and begin to sink? Why do we see so many miraculous things happen in our life, but we get to a point where we don't see the miraculous happen anymore, and we begin to doubt and question and say, why? See, I think personally, probably what Peter was thinking, because this is the way I think, is I'm going to step out onto the water, and God's just going to kind of calm everything down. And it's just going to be like glass, and I can just walk on And I think to some degree, Peter was probably shocked when he walked on the water, and he still saw the waves coming in the wind, and he, the waves in the wind were what kind of got him distracted. And maybe in your life, as you begin to see the miracles happen, you kind of question and wonder, well, well God, why? In the middle of a miracle, am I still experiencing the storms in my life? God, I thought with the miracles, kind of everything would go all right. See, church, we have to understand that God doesn't say that he will ever stop the storms from coming or take us out of the storms. 
But what he does promise us is that he will take the storms out from in us. And we will no longer have to be distracted by the waves and the wind around us. But no matter where we are, we can have peace in him that he is there with us. Peter stopped paying attention. And if we stop paying attention to Jesus, we begin to pay more attention to our problems. And if we begin to pay more attention to our problems, we're paying less attention to the Lord's power. It's easy to say, but Peter would have been fine if he would have just kept paying attention to Jesus that night. Or maybe we doubt the Lord because we don't know the Lord. Paul wrote in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, church, I think we need to read God's word to be able to believe God's word. And that's why if you've never heard uh, Lee Strobel, his testimony, it's an amazing testimony. The man was a newspaper writer, a journalist, a very well, um, well-written man, very knowledgeable man. And his wife did the unspeakable thing one day to him. She became a Christian. <laughs> now, Lee was an atheist, and so he decided, because he wanted to support his wife so much, he went on a three-year journey to prove his wife wrong. And at the end of three years, he came to the conclusion that there is no proof to prove the Bible wrong. You see, Lee was no longer able to ignore the Word of God because he had read the Word of God. And because he had read the Word of God, he was able to believe in the Word of God. And that's why I tell you time and time again, we need to spend time daily in devotions, daily in reading the Bible. Because if we want to believe it, we have to know it. And it's easy to say, don't doubt, but church, you have to realize that doubt can be devastating to our soul. You know, I looked up the definition of doubt, and it's to be in doubt about, to lack confidence in, or to consider unlikely. So as I looked at that definition, I thought, well, how could we put that definition of doubt in biblical terms? So yes, this definition will be in PK's version of the Bible, but how do we define doubt in God? Well, I think that's to be in doubt about who God is, to lack confidence in His power and promises, to consider unlikely that God, that God can or will do anything. And then finally, my definition of doubt includes to be distant from God. Jason and Ben, if you guys want to come on up here. There are many ways, church, that we can doubt God and his promises for miracles in our lives. We may ask, is he really listening? Is he going to do anything? Does he really, really even care? And sometimes, church, we may even ask, is he even real to me? Well, the answer to all that is yes. Yes. See, church, yes, God is listening. But more importantly, he's just not listening, he's talking. But the question is, are we listening to him? See, church, yes, he is doing something. In fact, thank you, Jesus, there is never a time when he isn't doing something in this world. But too often we get so busy in our own lives that we don't have time to see him working in our lives. And church, yes, God does care. Not only does he care about you, but more importantly, He loves you. And yes, church, He is real. In fact, He's very real. He's real to many people in many countries all over this world at all different periods of time. But church, that doesn't matter if He's not real to you. 
A step of faith became a fall of doubt for Peter. Verse 31, it says, And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? See, church, faith is not a temporary solution to our problems. But I believe that faith is a problem. There's a solution to our temporary problems. Jesus knew that night that that storm would be temporary. But Jesus wanted Peter to believe in him, to have faith in him, so that he could walk on water. And church, the Lord wants the same for you and me today. If we want to experience that, we must have faith that a miracle will happen. We must have faith that a miracle will happen. See, I don't know about you, but when we begin, when I begin to doubt God, what I'm really doing is forgetting all the things that He has already done in my life. When I begin to doubt God, God begins to shrink in my eyes. But see, I know that as my faith grows, as my God grows, it's my problems that begin to shrink in my eyes. And it doesn't mean that my problems get less severe. It just means that I see them in a different way. See, I think faith to me means giving up. No, I don't mean quitting. I don't mean surrendering. I don't mean walking into defeat. But I mean, faith means that we have given up. It means that we have taken all of our problems, our worries, our fears, and we have given them up to the Lord. Those miracles and those promises that we are waiting and hoping for, that we are praying for, have been given up to the Lord. See, I think the best thing that we can do as Christians in our walk and in our life is give up on everything and give it to Jesus to handle. John wrote in chapter 14, verse 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you looked at that scripture in your Bible, John 14, 12 through 14, the little title above it is called The Answered Prayer. But I actually think they should call it the result of our faith. Jesus says, if you believe, you will do greater works than I. Did you know that there are only two documented accounts of people walking on water in the Bible? Jesus and Peter. Peter walked on water that night because he was drawing getting closer to Jesus. But then G uh, Peter took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. For Jesus, or excuse me, for Peter, suddenly the waves and the wind were bigger in his eyes than Jesus was. But I think what John wrote is true. He who has faith in me will not only do like me, but will do greater than me because of your faith in me. If you look at the recipe for miracles that you have in your life right now, do you have that key ingredient of faith? Or is that ingredient missing? In church, if it's missing, then you're missing out on the amazing you're missing out on the awesome. You're missing out on the miraculous. We 
expect great things from our great God because our God is great. But as you go through your storms and as you doubt and as you question, as you want to, as you want to have faith, remember this. We expect great things from a great God because church, greater things are yet to come. Let's get ready to worship Jesus.
the cross you made history. Oh, you died for me forever. My praise will go to thee, oh God. Thank you for losing me to be a child and bear a name. Oh, Jesus, I. and knew Jesus, and then I said, but do you know him? And if you noticed, I began to cry. Now, sometimes I'll cry, but I thought that that was kind of odd for me because there wasn't really anything real sensitive or meaningful or powerful in that, that one question. So as we've been sitting here worshiping, I, I, I have to admit, I've kind of been asking God, like, that was kind of odd, God. But as we sat here and worshiped, I believe this is what God told me. See, I believe there are people here right now that have lost their faith in who He is. And I believe right now there are people that just like Peter took their eyes off of Jesus and they began to sink. But unlike Peter, we didn't cry out and say, save me, Lord. And I believe what God told me right now. When I was asking God, what was that about? I believe those tears I cried were not my tears, but they were His tears. I believe He told me those were not your tears, but my tears. I believe right now, those of us that have lost our faith and have walked away, Church, I believe that right now, God is crying for us. He loves you dearly. He wants you dearly. And I believe that his heart is breaking right now. Quite honestly, church, I don't think I've ever experienced him in such a powerful way that I did during that song. And I know we have one more song to go, but, but at the end of that song, if maybe what I just said touched you in a way, maybe, maybe God is nudging you right now, tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, hey, that's you, that's you, that's you. Or maybe you're saying, no, 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 that's not that one, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear. After this next song, if you want prayer, if you want encouragement, if you want hope, if you want to know of God's promises, you may say, I want to believe in them. I just don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. We're going to have people in the back and I'll be up here at church. We want to pray for you because if, if what I'm feeling is one-tenth of one percent of what God feels for you it is really amazing because even right now I can't seem to stop myself from crying and I can tell you and this isn't a man thing it's not like oh, no no I'm not crying I'm, can we just admit I am proud to cry to Jesus Christ amen but I can tell you the tears I've been crying are not my tears God loves you he wants you church it's time to take that step
The name of this church is called Journey of Faith. But our journey consists of each and every one of us taking our little steps. So Lord, we do thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying on that tree so that we could live with you for eternity. Lord, we thank you for your invitation to come. And Lord, I pray that each and every one of us would have the courage, the strength, the faith. We hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast. Journey of Faith is a four-square Christian church located in Glendora, California. For more information on Journey of Faith, visit us on the internet at www.the journeyoffaith.net That's www.thejourneyoffaith.net You may also call us at 626-914-3400 And finally, we hope you will come visit us. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 a.m. We offer ministries for all ages from newborns through high school during our service. May God bless you. Thank you for joining the journey.